Nigeria's local content law of 2010 offered indigenous oil companies opportunities to grow their assets. This resulted in greater engagement of local contractors in downstream industries. Before 2010, however, a few indigenous companies in the downstream space did their best to hold their own in the sector while competing with foreign contractors. OilServe Limited was one of the organizations that strived to make their mark with notable participation in the oil economy. Incorporated in 1992, OilServe began operations in 1995, providing services to multinationals and local oil and gas companies operating in Nigeria. As far as OilServe is concerned, not much has changed in terms of the services. We still compete against the same uh, uh, competitors, more or less, and then we still have to go through the same process. I can always tell you that even now it's more and more difficult because we're having more and new entrants into the industry that obviously, as we will expect, we make it more difficult as far as competition is concerned. We are not complaining. We actually like that because this is what it is intended to be. Oil serves spectrum of services covers a wide range of activities with established branches and subsidiaries spread across the African continent. We started as Oil Serve, which is an EPC company. But we've since grown into so many other things within our industry. An example is Oil Serve as an entity already we have moved into other countries within Africa. We have OISAV Uganda, we have OISAV Kenya, we are currently uh, also operating in Benin Republic. So in terms of geographical spread, we've spread, doing exactly the same kind of services. Now, beyond that also, we have set up subsidiaries of OISAV to address other aspects of the industry. Now, we have gone into exploration and production, which is EMP, and we set up a company called Frazoil. Frazoil is a 100% subsidiary of OilServe. And with Frazoil, we own Block 3 in Benin Republic, which we were awarded last year following a competitive bid. And uh, we're, going, we're already handling exploration there. As we speak, we are at a stage where we're analyzing existing 2D seismic and 3D seismic. By the same token also, we've gone into gas, gas development and gas delivery for power, mostly. Certified by the International Organization for Standardization, OilServe prides itself as a company employing the latest technology in pipeline installations across Nigeria. We work with agencies to make sure that um, both the environment and the economic life of the people are not unduly hampered by the nature of our business. In some cases, we do not even uh, tamper with the structures. For instance, if we are going to cross a road, we have a technology which we call uh, direct, uh, horizontal drilling technology, which is we bore under, just the same way we do uh, for the river crossing. We bore under the road without affecting anything that is happening on the road. Uh, for very long lines and taking into consideration the, the vandalization of pipelines, we integrate into the, the design what we call the line break valves, which should automatically separate a pipeline. Not only if, uh, if you want to undertake repair, but if there is vandalization and there is the risk that um, there could be explosion, you can cut off a particular pipeline from the other. And that line break valve is that mechanism that we use to do that. So in, in, in designing, in the concept, those considerations have been made. The HD technology, first and foremost, um, the basis of it is to conserve the environment. Um, secondly, it's uh, meant to avoid obstacles. 
uh, especially in a beat up area uh, where you cannot really afford open court. Uh, then thirdly, it can be uh, vandal proof because you can go up to 50 meter deep, which means that no human being can actually excavate uh, manually to that depth. OilServe Limited is currently working on the largest gas transmission pipeline system in Nigeria, covering a distance of 128 kilometers using pipes with a minimum length of 14 meters and a 48-inch diameter. This project is part of the commencement of Nigeria's gas master plan. The pipeline system is starting from Obiafo Brecom axis. It will pass three states of rivers, Bayelsa, to Delta, and to Edo State, all in the south-south region of Nigeria. For us, we've come of age uh, in terms of our experience in pipeline construction. Uh, we've built capacity from a uh, flow line, what you call a normal uh, six inch. We've done 12 inch, we've done 18 inch, we've done 24. So based on this experience we've got, we're able to take on the 48 inch project. And so far, the, 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 we are doing well. The project is all about, um, is a, we, have, we are handling lot B, which is 65.13 kilometers by 48 inch with two end facilities, which what we call the intermediate begin uh, facility or station, they call it IPS at Tomokwata. And then we have also the GTP, what they call the gas treatment plant at Oben. Uh, these are major, these are the terminal facilities. So currently now, uh, OB3 also has uh, three major river crossings. We have about seven uh, road crossings and railway crossings. Currently at the execution stage, it is expected that the project will be completed by 2017. The OB3 project employs 280 people at the moment, with a projected 500 job opportunities at its peak. The company is also using the automatic welding system to ensure better quality. We're talking of a pipeline that traverses what you can call jungle, traverses river crossings, some of them up to two kilometers wide, uh, swamp also sections. And if you look at that, the complexity of the, of the work, plus the fact that you're talking of a huge sized pipeline. Imagine a 48 inch pipeline, a joint of it, you look at it between 12 and 15 meters, and when you have to cross rivers or walk, for example, in swamp locations, you have to concrete coat. One pipe alone is so heavy that even a 20-ton truck may not be able to carry one pipe without it being reinforced. Now, you imagine how you handle such pipes, how you manage that, how you move them to, to location, how you weld, how you ditch, it's a lot of work. No contractor has built that kind of pipeline in Nigeria, so it's the first of its type. A major player in Nigeria's emerging gas sector, OilServe is working on another big gas distribution project known as the Greater Lagos Phase 4 project. Uh, we built uh, pipelines across Lagos. It started with uh, the Phase 1, the Phase 2, the Phase 3, and the Phase 4 is to give gas to Lagos Island, and Victoria Island. Uh, that project is broken down into three segments. And the first segment was completed in December last year. We're embarking on segment three, which, is, um, which will involve crossing the Echo River, the lagoon. And we're currently having a bit of a challenge in the sense that we're using a technology that will bore a line under the river without affecting what is going on on the river or in the river. And that technology is called uh, horizontal directional drilling. The project was started six months ago and will be completed in July 2015. At Omun Sedege in Delta State, the installation of a 51.4 kilometer by 12 inch crude oil pipeline system and other associated facilities is complete and in use. As we speak today, they've already ramped up production more than 35,000 barrels. 
Now, you look at what it means to ramp up production by 1,000 barrels, multiply that by the cost of oil. Every day, you see how much money we made for them. Prior to that, these operators had capacity to possibly pump 40,000 barrels a day collectively. But they were constrained to about 20,000 barrels a day because of pipeline availability. They were pumping through IG pipeline. And IG could only give them that maximum because they also require part of the pipeline. At Oron, a 37.4 kilometer by 12 inch gas pipeline project is complete. OilServe has the ability to weld and lay oil and gas pipe and flow lines ranging from 2 to 56 inch diameters and the company has executed several million dollar projects across the country. Of course it requires a lot of planning, it requires uh, keeping to, to, to known processes and acceptable processes that have been developed for this uh, work. Uh, putting the resources generally it takes time, takes a lot of effort, takes a lot of discipline, but the bottom line is that being that we as a company we have already been in business and we have developed processes, it made it a bit easier for us. We already have within us the competencies to be able to deal with the challenges. So in terms of actually putting it together and getting it to go, um, while it took a process, it took some time, it wasn't anything very difficult for us because this is our bread and butter. As local participation in Nigeria's oil and gas space increases, so is the call for local manufacturing. Most of the materials used for oil and gas installations are imported into the country. The fact remains that most of these pipes are usually procured outside Nigeria. Nigeria, as of today, does not have the capacity to provide all these pipes, and that's why most is procured. There is only possibly one pipe mill in Nigeria today, which does not actually have the capacity to support this level of uh, piping. But the fact is, other pipe mills are being set up. We are also involved in trying to set up a pipe mill. With notable achievements in the oil and gas sector, Oil Serves Group Chairman and CEO Emeka Okwasa says the company's success does not lie in projects executed. The biggest asset any entity, any company can ever boast of having is not the equipment, it's not the houses, it's not the facilities, it is the people. If you have the right people and you develop them because they won't just fall from the sky and you maintain that process of continuous development and then bringing in new people and continuously developing them, you find out that you have the biggest asset. That is what is driving our entire mindset. OilServe celebrates 20 years in business in 2015 and they are already venturing into other fields, such as agriculture. The company's vision is to be an integrated oil and gas company going public in a few years' time.